Because now that Dubois has went ahead and, you know, he's been victorious over Anthony Joshua, the, the natural question is, what's next for Daniel Dubois? You know, how does he parlay all this newfound success that he's had in 2024 into uh, the rest of his career? Because funny enough, I feel like I feel like Dubois, and I said it, I said it going into the Joshua fight. I said, look, he's 27, but his, his 27 isn't like most fighters in boxing 27. He's packed a lot of fights into his career, a lot of good fights like um, what well, Nathan Gorman, I believe. Uh, you have uh, Usyk, Hergovic, Miller. Uh, I believe he fought Tom Little. I could, be, I, I, I could be wrong, but I think he fought Tom Little. He fought a lot of fighters. So Dubois has a very high-level ring experience. And, 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 and I also thought with the confidence that it was, in a, it was in a bold well from going into the Joshua fight. So as far as what's next for him, look, the obvious answer is the, the fight that Dubois will probably want more than any other is the Usyk fight because um, he got stopped in that fight. But it was a, it was a weird fight because it's obviously caused a lot of controversy in boxing. I, I, I personally thought that the body shot that Dubois landed on Usyk was fine. It was legal. And, um, you know, I, I think the referee and the, the referee in Poland, they bailed Usyk out. Uh, I, li- I love Usyk. Always been a fan. I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. I feel like Usyk got bailed out in that fight. And, you know, Dubois probably should have been the unified heavyweight champion of the world. Um, but, again, Usyk got up. Um, Dubois was probably demoralized after not getting the stoppage. And he was just too young and inexperienced to build off that 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 moment. And, and Usyk took advantage of him. But... As 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 fate would have it, you know, God has the best of planners. Dubois has fought his way back into contention, into being a champion, and now become probably one of the most uh, talked about and most in demand and exciting heavyweights in the world. So if Usyk comes through this Fury fight, I don't know if Usyk's gonna bow out gracefully and retire. But you know, if if he has any plans of fighting after the Fury fight, if he's victorious. The, the, the Dubois Usyk rematch, I think, is a very intriguing fight for a lot of boxing fans because you're gonna have half of boxing saying that it was an illegal shot and then you're gonna have people like me saying yo Dubois got screwed and really and truthfully if you want to it you know all kind of putting the jokes aside you could look at Dubois as the real undisputed champion so that's how crazy boxing and life is you know one decision one outcome could 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 swing the whole fate of everything and how, how things play out but again respect to Usyk great fight I love Usyk love Dubois um, I'll let us see them get it on. If not, if not Usyk or the Fury winner, then look, if he can't get the Usyk Fury winner, I would like to see Dubois get, um, either Martin Bacoli or Zhang. I think, I think Martin Bacoli and Zhang and Martin Bacoli, Zhang Jale or Zhili Zhang and, uh, Joseph Parker. Those are the three fights for Dubois. I think, I think any one of those three fights would suffice. Um, starting with Bacoli, I think Bacoli versus, um, Bocoli versus Dubois, I think, has the potential to be one of the most explosive fights in boxing. Everyone who's been following Martin Bocoli for all these years knows how dangerous and explosive he is. But the world really found it out when he fought Jared Anderson and absolutely positively exposed Jared Anderson. Jared Anderson had no answer for Martin Bocoli. And Martin Bocoli is, is a fire that not a lot of fighters are running to, to fight, but he's he's definitely a, a relevant real player in the heavyweight division. So I, th- I think the kind of exchanges in the and the power punching display you would get in that fight would be really good for the boxing fans. If not that fight, then you got Joseph Parker, who again, Joseph Parker, former heavyweight champion. Joseph Parker, one of the best resumes in boxing. Joseph Parker, a guy that, much like Dubois, took some tough losses early in his career, has come back in a major way, beating Wild, uh, Zhang and Wilder back to back. So, um, you know, seeing him fight a guy like Dubois, could he defuse? A guy with the blend of speed, power, and agility of Dubois, that'd be a very intriguing fight. And then I said, uh, Zhang. I mean, Zhang, we know what Zhang brings to the table. Zhang is, is um, he's coming out of a big knockout win over Wilder. Zhang is a heavy-handed southpaw counter power puncher. Very dangerous guy. Only knock on him is his gas tank ain't the best. But if, hey, if Dubois exchanged with a guy like Zhang, them, them first four rounds or however long it lasts be very dangerous for him. So um, no shortage of, of, of options for Dubois. And even I'll even throw in Aji Kabiel, a guy that had a banner year in 2024, beat Frank Sanchez, beat Mahmoudov, and really fought himself into relevancy and, and contention as well. So I think any one of those four, Bacoli, Parker, Zhang, Kabiel, you can pick any one of the four. And I think those will all be, uh, those will all spit, those will all, will, will all be great matchups. So, 
um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm really excited for Dubois because, you know, respect to Dubois. I remember when I met him. I remember I had, I had the honor to meet him and interview him uh, in 2022 when he came to Miami for the Trevor Bryan fight. And, uh, you know, du Dubois watched this channel. Like, a quiet as kept. I didn't realize he watched this channel because he knew who I was before I even in introduced myself because he was like, true school sports, yeah? And I was like, oh, okay, he knows, he knows. So respect to him. Uh, good, good fighter, down to earth. Um, you know, definitely uh, fun, a funny character. Subtly, he's got the subtle humor to him, even though he's a bit quiet and awkward. You know, he's really come out of his shell, both in the ring and out the ring. And I, I think overall, Dubois is becoming a real net positive for the heavyweight division and for um, just boxing in general. So, yeah, there's a lot of good things ahead for him. Let me see. Who else, what else we got? We got we got 17 people here. Make sure you smash that like button. We got, um, let me see. We got my main, my main man, Hoops Combo. What's up, BT? Good to see you, champ. Hope all is well. Good to see you back in the chat again. Um, a man right here says, Joshua is the most underappreciated heavyweight in the division. I don't underappreciate Anthony Joshua. I, I very much appreciate Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua um, has taken British boxing in his, in, his, in his era. He took British boxing into another stratosphere where, where, where I feel like, you know, British boxing used to be more of a niche thing. British boxing became a, a worldwide thing because of Anthony Joshua. Stadium fight after stadium fight after stadium fight. He, he set records at the, at the box office, gave great fights, fought, you know, a lot of uh, uh, names in his division. You know, I, I can't I, – I, I have a lot of love for Anthony Joshua. Um, you know, I, I do think he is done as a top elite championship boxer in the heavyweight division, but – I, I definitely have appreciated his contributions to, to, to boxing and um, everything he's given. So, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that later on, Ray. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to AJ in a second. I, I want to sit to Dubois because I want to give him his, his just due. Alex Fitzmaurice, big payback. Good to see you, Alex. He says, Daniel Dubois is in a good boat right now. The mandatory is IG Cabiel. Tyson Fury could be an option if he beats Usyk. Usyk already talked about moving back down to Cruiserweight. Yeah, he did. You're right. That's a hell of a point. Usyk has spoken about that. Um, I'm not really sure if I want to see Usyk at Cruz Bay again. I mean, I mean, I guess him and Opatia could be cool, but like, like, all respect to Opatia. Opatia is a good fighter. You know, I like Opatia. He's the lineal champion, but like, as good as he is, he's not in the class of Usyk. Um, so I, I, I'm not really interested in seeing, you know, Usyk at Cruz Bay. To be honest. Losses at a young age aren't a bad thing. It's how you respond to them. Look at it. What it, what the Klitschko's went on to do after early. Exactly. So that, that's why I try not to let one loss be a death sentence for a fighter. You know, as you you can always learn and mature and get better. Yeah. Thank God he didn't become Victor Ortiz. I'm, I'm I'm with you on that one. This is a question I've been thinking long and hard about. Who do you think has? Oh God. Yo, I, I, I'm not one to say pause or no Diddy, but this is, I'll make an exception for this. Pause and no Diddy. We're not, we're not going to answer that question. <laughs> we're not going to answer that question. Um, boxing fans are too quick to write people off after one. They do. They do. Um, and that's why fighters are very reluctant, reluctant to, to take fights when the money isn't right. Because if the money isn't right and they're not going to be compensated for it, they don't want to deal with the backlash of potentially losing a big fight because, you know, it's just... People have all their memories. I'd like to see AJ versus Miller if he wants to go on and rebuild. Unfinished business. I like the way Miller looked against Therese. He put in the work after the Dubois. He did. Jerome Miller deserves a lot of credit. Um, you know, he went down there to Philadelphia with Bo Ziennis, who I know is a, is a hell of a coach, and lost the weight and 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 really started listening. And he and he beat, I thought he beat Andy Ruiz. I, th I thought Ruiz was very lucky to get out with a draw. And yes, you're right. I think. Joshua versus Miller is still a fight that would would, would be good at the box office. It's, it's a it's a fight that commercially I still think is a is an amazing fight, you know. And I, and I still want to see it. And I still want Sky Sports to release the gloves are off that we never got. That's right, that's right, David. Tell him, David. Tell him, David. Talk, Philip Hergovich. You know, I, I I spoke on this briefly in my post fight review video, but I'll speak on it some more since David brought it up. Put some respect on Philip Hergovich because that man has a chin that's made out of granite. Yes. What I learned watching the Dubois fight with Joshua is that, number one, Daniel Dubois is a lot better than a lot of us thought he was. And number two, Philip Hergovich is, is, is made out of steel because unlike the Hergovich fight, when, Anthony, when, when Dubois started being 
physical with Joshua, leading with his head, elbows, some of the things that he did in the Hugovich fight that he got away with. They didn't let, allow that to fly in the Joshua fight. He he uh, got warned for it immediately, and um, he had to actually just beat him with his boxing skills. He couldn't beat him through the art of fighting, so he had, he had to beat him through the art of boxing, uh, right? So in the Hergovich fight, Hergovich had to deal with Daniel Dubois, the boxer, and Daniel Dubois, the fighter, roughing him up, being physical. And not once did Hergovich ever hit the canvas. Not once did he take a knee. And unlike Joshua, he won multiple rounds. Some people even thought that he was winning the fight before the stoppage, or at least that it was close. So I still think watching that fight, what, what I learned is, what, which, which is what I already knew. I, I didn't need to see this fight to know this, but it, it confirmed to me that, you know, Philip Hergovich, just so long as he gets mentally right and, and doesn't take this loss too harshly, he can he can still beat anybody on his best night in the heavyweight division. I still don't think we've seen the best of Hergovich in the heavyweight division, and I think a lot of that is down to training habits and some things mentally he needs to get straightened out. That That's... that's that's what I. That's some of what I think and some of what I know. Like I know, I know Philip personally, and I know mentally there's some things he's dealing with that he needs to get, uh, get uh, overcome. And then the thing that I think is that I, I think that he he overtrains himself. That's why the guy that's on there in the ring on fight night is not matching the guy that I see in the gym. So you know, um, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens when he comes back. You know. Last comment, and then I'll go ahead and. Uh, I'll go ahead and get back to my next speaking point. Um, I can't lie, man. I genuinely believe this was another Ruiz situation. I think AJ simply got hurt early and never recovered. How his low lead hand stance was a horrible tactical decision. It was, but I, I don't. I don't view this as a Ruiz. Ruiz, um, at that time, AJ hadn't lost. AJ had that aura. He had that undefeated level. That that aura of invincibility. You know, he was the guy that was really in the driver's seat of heavyweight boxing and, and just boxing in general at that time. That was a bigger shock to me when you consider, especially when you when you consider how that fight started. That fight started with uh, Ruiz getting dropped, you know. So when, when Ruiz got dropped, Anthony Joshua at that time and even now, he's got a reputation for, for being a very good finisher when he has you hurt, and um, it was no different in that fight. We thought that uh, he was going to finish Ruiz off, Ruiz caught on the temple, and then the rest is history. This is a fight where I, I thought all week, you know, that Anthony Joshua, you know, he could definitely win the fight. But he was going to be in some trouble because Dubois had some things with him that he hadn't really dealt with for a long time. Um, like Valine didn't have what Dubois brought to the table. Um, Us uh, not Usyk, um, you know, Hellenius, these guys, Nganu, these guys that people were getting gas off AJ beating, they did not have the level of youth, size, athleticism, agility, punching power, physicality of a Daniel Dubois. So I can't say that it was like another read. I can't, I can't agree with you on that one. But, um, Getting to the next speaking point.